Big Gum TV. My name is Jace. We are at week 12, count it, week 12 of Like at a ha Life at a Hacker School for Hack Reactor. We're with Mark Rossetti again. Mark, it's been a long haul. We're at 12 weeks. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. This has been a blast. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, uh, among the 12 more memorable weeks in my life, for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, Mark, we're going to get right to it. I know we're on, a, we're on a tight schedule here. What did you learn about the hiring process that surprised you or may surprise the audience? For sure. I mean, I, I guess what's probably useful is just to hear what a lot of tech companies are doing for the hiring process, which is, um, you know, very typical is you, you, you start with an email, you know, introducing yourself, sending along a resume maybe. Maybe a resume. A lot of places uh, want a portfolio more than, they want a, more than they want a resume. That might be surprising for people coming from the business world. Uh, definitely what you've done is more important than where you've been. Um, and then, you know, the first step is, is, a, uh, is a phone call. Sometimes, sometimes it's just a phone call to get a feel of you from more of a personal standpoint. And sometimes they go straight on to a technical phone call and asking you some fundamental questions about JavaScript or, or, or you know, technical questions just to get a sense of do you have the basic knowledge. Um, the follow-up from that, if they're happy, is uh, often to bring you in and have a face-to-face uh, -face conversation. And those face-to-face -face conversations can be anywhere from, I'd say, uh, at a bare minimum, two hours, all the way up to a full day. Uh, a full day is not uncommon. And, and that full day uh, could include, and this is where a lot of real variations come in. The first two steps are, are, are pretty common. But when, once you go in for the interview, companies vary widely in the way that they want to evaluate candidates. And, and this amounts to, it's very difficult. You'll never find an engineer that knows everything, and you'll never find an engineer that knows all of the tools for your office. So you need to find an engineer who can learn everything and who can learn all of the tools for your office. And it's very difficult to evaluate someone's potential, you know, to evaluate what will this person do in the next year, in the next two years, in the next three years. So companies have radically different approaches to that. Some of the more conventional approaches are asking algorithmic questions and um, asking, uh, you know, basically they, they amount to programming brain teasers uh, to see about a person's analytical abilities. Um, but a lot of companies have, have also changed their perspective and said, all right, maybe those brain teasers for our company are not the most predictive tool and we prefer to look at a person's existing code bases and what they've made or we'd prefer to look at, um, or we'd prefer to actually work with people. And that's a very time intensive thing, and I understand why many companies don't do this, but some companies um, actually want to sit down and pair program with you for several hours on a project, like kind of a, a toy project or something, um, to just work with you. You know, I mean, that's what they're going to be doing if they hire you, is working with you. And so um, the theory is that that's the best way to test if they're going to like working with you, is to work with you. Um, and so I, I, I certainly see all these different approaches and the justifications for them, but it's, it's interesting. It's, a very, it's clearly a very difficult problem that companies are trying to solve in, in evaluating who will be the right candidate, and it's really neat to see the different approaches that they're taking. Awesome. So I just want to quickly summarize because you said some really important things in there. So uh, number one is that um, the, the first stages are often um, very similar across the tech company board, uh, but not all companies are asking for a traditional resume. They more want a portfolio or uh, a sample of work that you can demonstrate, right? And then you... I mean, you yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm finding, um, I'm finding a lot of companies um, at some point in the process do want to see the resume, but it's, it's probably not the focus of the conversation. Okay. All right. This is good. I want to jump to the next question here. So what would you recommend, knowing what you know now, what would you recommend to others who are going to restart this process like you are now? Build things and be ready to show them. That is, that is the bottom line. Um, almost everyone I've spoken to has had the question, so what have you been working on lately? Or can you show me something you've built? Um, and if you can pull out a project and have a compelling story of both why it's cool to use and why it was cool to build, both of those things. So it's not just a cool product, it's also a cool technical challenge. You know, like what did you do that was interesting or unusual or that you really had to struggle with? Um, if you have a good technical story, that, that is really compelling, at least I think. I mean, I'm not hiring people, but my opinion is that that's a very compelling thing that you can tell an interviewer. Um, and it's also very representative. There's nothing artificial about that. It's work that you did, and if you can talk in, in an articulate way about it, that, that says good things about you and the work that you do. 
Okay, so Mark, you're going to blush a little bit, but I just have to say something here. Um, you, you are a program. You're a developer now, but you are yeah. extremely articulate, and you don't. Um, but you don't pontificate. You're not flowery. You're not like I do that, right? I'm articulate, but I <laughs> ramble on, and no, I get you're not so that distracted. <laughs> I, I am. I do that. I know I do. But the point is, is that you you automatically answered my next question because when you said, you know, they're looking for. Um, you want to build something that you you can demonstrate. You you said immediately what that means. Like, what are they really looking for in in a succinct way? So I, I can just skip that question. Remember <laughs> what he just said, guys, because that was that was fantastic. Okay, so um, as I just stroked your ego a little bit, where do you think you were the least prepared? Or you know, I know it's kind of hard to say, but where would you think you were weakest? Where could you, where would you like to shore up for your next interviews? Um. You know, I don't think it's something as short term as next interview. I think it's a longer term thing. And it's just recognizing what you do and don't get out of a 12 week program. Um, what you definitely do get, and what I have gotten, is a lot of awesome hands on experience, building things, doing things, uh, getting used to reading documentation, learning new tools from scratch. That's awesome. Uh, what you don't learn is you don't learn uh, the ins and outs of computer science. I mean, we, we definitely. We, we talk about that stuff a little bit, but uh, you know, there's a reason people go to four-year universities for that. And when you're in an interview, um, many interviews will use uh, algorithmic questions or, uh, or advanced computer science questions as a way of measuring your, um, your, your mental agility. Mm -hmm. um, and coming from a hacker school like Hack Reactor, those can be very challenging. Um, it's, and we do some work preparing for those, but I, I, I know that I'm probably not as well prepared for those questions as a computer, sci as a computer science major. Um, so that's definitely, that's definitely something that could be considered a weak point. On the other hand, a lot of the work that I'll actually be doing, um, at least initially in any role that I take, will probably not be heavy on algorithmic work. And we talked about this in some of the earlier interviews, um, week maybe two, three, four. Um, so it's not something that I'm concerned about greatly in the workplace, but it is something that I'm aware of in the hiring process and that I'm aware of um, a lot of companies evaluating for that may not be my strongest suit. All right. Last question. If you could go back before week one, knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Um, I think, so I mean, Partly for me, this decision to pursue programming happened pretty fast. It was over the course of just a couple of months that I re that I, I just had kind of a life realization and, and totally switched directions. Um, so maybe maybe what I'm about to say is practical for my own case. But in general, I would say there is a lot more mileage that I think I could have gotten on my own before entering a program like this. Um, and I, I think the tools that are out there, they're still rocky. Tools like uh, like Code Academy and Coursera and Udacity and and Code School, they're still they're not all that they can be. They're getting better, um, but they are getting better, and that's the point. And uh, and I do think maybe there was more mileage I could have gotten out of those before I ever walked in the door at Hack Reactor, um, but that's fine. I mean, you know, maybe I'd be ten percent further than I am now, um, which would be great. But uh, as it is, I'm really happy with how things turned out in any case. So I guess what I would say is. If you know if you're out there and you're worrying about Hack Reactor or or, or applying and you know you're thinking oh man if I don't get this I have nothing well no you don't have nothing you have a lot of great tools out there and take full advantage of them and above all don't just take classes build things that was a mistake that I made um, I think was doing a lot of Code Academy because I did do a fair amount um, without actually apart from Code Academy going out and building projects. Um, and I don't actually think that Code Academy prepared me very well to go out and build projects. That was that was one of my one of my criticisms of, of their teaching approach. Um, so yeah, go out and build things that are interesting or amusing or fun to you, uh, and you will learn a lot. And um, that will either prepare you well for for a hacks for a hacker school like Hack Reactor, or it will set you up independently uh, to do great things on your own. Mm -hmm. Or you come to the realization sooner rather than later that coding is not for you, which is That's also too. very true. That's really because important. I, I have some friends who wasted four years and tens of thousands of dollars to find that very question out. That right? is so, a bummer. Um, 
Yeah, you don't it want is. To do that. <laughs> it is. Well, they went because it's a good, you know, good career move, right? I you guess. Know, rather than yeah. you know, answering the important questions first. So we we are uh, almost up on twenty minutes, Mark. Uh, again, I have to thank you again. But this is not our last episode. We are going to do one more uh, when Mark has some special news to share. So, Mark, <laughs> thank you very much. We'll be in touch, and, and we'll connect at a time that's convenient for you, okay? Superb. All thank right, you, well, Mark. I look forward, to, uh, look forward to our next time, and I look forward yes. to have some great news to tell you. <laughs> have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs> you too. Take care.